You know, I was actually very fearful of firearms. I didn't have much experience at all with them. So when I met my husband and he told me that he was interested in starting a gun company, I thought that they were death machines. And I think that's because I really didn't have much education on firearms. I hadn't been around them. Welcome to Drop and Give Me 20, where you learn keys to entrepreneurial success as Lindsay Germono interviews business owners with military backgrounds on what works and what doesn't. Listen as they focus on the stories, both challenges and wins that military entrepreneurs have faced in growing their businesses. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Drop and Give Me 20. I have an amazing guest on today's show. Well, I have amazing guests on all of the episodes, but today is someone that I'm really, really excited about because of the impression that she left on me. Everyone meet Rocky Harrigan with Unbranded AR. Lindsay, it's such a pleasure to be on the show with you. Thank you so much. So, Rocky, when we met, it was at a conference. I didn't know you. You were the keynote speaker. And I will tell you that I'm, I'm not easily impressed by people. It's a type A personality and, and control. <laughs> but you are someone that, I mean, at the whole entire day, just your style, your grace, the way that you were authentic, you um, gave everybody goosebumps with your stories and, and how you came to be and how successful your business has become. And it, wow. you have been somebody that I have followed ever since. And I mean, your Instagram game is off the charts. And I also am a very big dog lover, and I know you have a very, very, yeah, very, <laughs> a very big dog. <laughs> yeah. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself, and and you know, feel free to talk about Unbranded AR or that big, beautiful Great Dane of yours. <laughs> well, that Great Dane is, you know, part of the why. You know, my family is a big uh, reason why I do what I do. And I met you at the Millspo Conference, which is an organization f- for military spouses that provides resources for entrepreneurs. And so I also have that passion for entrepreneurship and providing military spouses in particular and also women uh, resources and just the confidence that we really do have everything we need to succeed. And whether that's in our careers or uh, starting our own business, those are some those are things that I'm very passionate about. So it was a pleasure to meet you. And I I think uh, thank you for those kind words. But it's really just because I love doing what I do. And I'm going to tell you what, you just said a lot about, you know, women and um, empowering and stuff, but your business is, I mean, you're in the business of ammunitions and it's, it's sexy. It's, you know, the way you've done it is tasteful. And as someone who, you know, consults with other businesses on how to have that brand, you've nailed it. I mean, the way that you have it, (laughs) it's like, it's not, you know, it's, you're not a, what do they call them? Um, Gun bunnies or something? Gun bunnies. Yep. I'm not a gun bunny. Well, (laughs) I work very hard not to be one. You know, I just think that the way I present myself online and the way I want my kids to see me eventually, I don't have kids now, but eventually I want to have, leave them with an image and um, them to be proud of what their mom does. And so I, I... I'm very interested in firearms and so, and that's our business. So for me, uh, I wanted to portray myself in the way that I thought little girls would want to be portrayed. You know, firearms can have such a negative connotation and they can have this image. And I just wanted to bring to light my reality and what my life is like with firearms in it. And so I think you can still be a girly girl and uh, have embrace our second amendment rights to carry. There's no other there. I mean, the timing and everything is especially this year. I mean, I'm sure, and we can probably have a million other episode (laughs) tapings on this. I'm sure you get a lot of conversations or questions about firearms in general. and, And I know you're very passionate about it. How do you, I mean, how do you approach those that are on the other side of the spectrum? We'll say. What you just mentioned there with my introduction, that's a very positive perspective of what I do. Sometimes I do get hate mail sometimes because Mm. it's a very controversial issue. I don't know that if it's a specifically unique thing that I have to deal with with firearms. I think it's just life. I think that uh, when when you're in the limelight and when you're um, running a business, you are going to have obstacles. And for, for, 
for me, it's not to make it a political issue and to keep it more on track with business. It's about my why. And I'm comfortable doing what I do. I'm comfortable selling the product I do. I'm about 10% uh, retail and the rest is wholesale or dealers. And for me, I do it what I do because I'm providing a service and, and I love doing that. I love providing that service. So Rocky, tell us a little bit about how you came into the actual business part of this. I know you actually didn't have any experience with, uh, with guns or, or any of this. That's right. I, you know, I was actually very fearful of firearms. I didn't have much experience at all with them. So when I met my husband and he told me that he uh, was interested in starting a gun company, I thought that they were death machines, to quote some of our um, famous politicians in California. And I think that's because I really didn't have much education on firearms. I hadn't been around them. So it's been a process, you know, I've learned, I've taken NRA courses and I've gained an interest. And as I've become familiar with the firearm and learned to use it as a tool, you know, I wasn't going to share this, but I I was actually in a situation in my home after I had received training. uh, I wanted to become an expert at what I did. And so I started really working with the AR-15. So that's actually my defense when I when when I'm afraid and I need to grab something in my home I'm going to go to my AR15 because that's what I'm tra- trained in and that's what I'm comfortable with and at 2:30 in the morning my husband was actually gone on training with the military and I was by myself with my dog and a and I lived sort of out in the woods kind of in a secluded area and a car pulled up to my house and what I did was I went straight to my AR-15 and I stood in front of my window and I loaded a magazine the way you should, right in my headspace, loading that magazine. And I pushed, I pushed on to, and you know, you hear that clicking sound <laughs> and I was ready to go. And it's so interesting because my silhouette was visible through that in my kitchen window and he saw me load that magazine. The lights were shining towards my house and the car just left. You know, I don't know what I have done, what I, sure. what I would have done, but I knew that in that moment I felt empowered and I felt safe. You know, I'm still here today because of it. And so I really feel strongly about educating women and, and teaching them to use them properly. Of course, if you don't have that interest and you're not, then of course you shouldn't be around firearms, but right. if you want that, then I'm all about it. Has there been an obstacle or something that you'd love to share with, you know, some of our listeners today? You know, for us, the biggest obstacle we had being in the firearms industry, we couldn't get a loan. Federal funding was, is kind of on halt right now. And especially at the start of our business. So for us, you know, there are many ways to find funding. Uh, you know, people say go to your friends and family. That's not something we were comfortable with. I know um, great resources now online for crowdfunding, you know, Kickstarter, uh, Rocket Hub. There's all those great resources for finding ways, angel investors. Um, but for us, bank loans weren't an option. So, but we, we really held to bootstrapping. For us, that made, we, that meant that we had to make personal sacrifices because if you can't manage a little, you're not going to be able to manage a lot. And so for us, we had had jobs, great paying jobs, and we, that meant selling our home, um, downsizing, and I quit my job. My husband still was in the military. We used a significant portion of our own funds and savings, and we just bootstrapped. We kept our appointments. We uh, hit the ground running. We really, really, really sold and um, built great relationships It's interesting because when we launched our website in January of 2015, so a year and a half ago, you know, we launched as Build or Buy AR, and we've gone through some changes. But um, part of that idea for bootstrapping and probably the thing that I think has made us successful is, you know, we had an idea when we launched our website that we're going to sell complete ARs. And we're going to just do that by, you know, buying bulk pricing. And people are going to buy ours because that's what they're going to do. But for us, we found out when we started listing individual products on our website that our margins were higher when we sold. So every day, you know, bootstrapping, we're also looking for 
what is the best business decision? And as much as I love to build ARs all day, we wouldn't, we weren't selling them. We put them, we had great ARs as options on our website, but what we were selling were parts. And so, you know, I think lower parts kits, one product that we sold, uh, I think we sold about 250 the first month that we launched uh, products. Um, we're now at about 20,000 lower parts kits per month. And that's because we, instead of taking all of our investment into rifles, which were significantly higher investment, we uh, started, what product did we sell the most of? And that was lower parts kits for us. So we decided, well, we're, you know what, if we're going to, if this is what's going to make us money, we're, you know, it's, it's not exciting to sell springs and parts in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, you make it exciting. You make it look exciting. <laughs> But it's exciting when you sell a ton of them and then yeah. profit, you're able to then provide. But let me ask you, why why can't I just go to a gun store and buy an AR-15? Like, why is this this way? Well, you can. And for some people, and for someone who says, I, I'm looking, people come to me and they say, do you, do you think I should build an AR? What's cheaper? And I think it's personal choice. You can get a great deal on a complete rifle already built. And some people, because the thing that people don't understand is you do have to invest in tools. So although it's trendy right now, and that's the thing that, you know, guys want to do, build their rifle, there are advantages to doing both. Um, there are advantages, you can get a great deal on a complete rifle and you don't have to think about it. You can just learn and figure out if you want to become familiar, get familiar with your rifle and decide what you want to go from there. But I recommend buying one complete and then, Hey, if you want to change something out, maybe go from there. And then if you decide, I really like to take this on. Once you understand what you actually like about the rifle, that's when I say, you know what, you should go ahead. Let's, Let's start building that rifle. Let's invest in some equipment to put that together. And then you can customize it and make it the way you want to make it. I believe that we've actually capitalized on the lower parts kit so much that we've been able, companies that were using foreign parts have switched over to American made parts because we've been able to provide it for them at a cheaper cost. Woo! Uh, go America! So, yeah, so I really feel like I'm improving the AR-15 that, AR-15s that you see and you can get a very affordable American Tactical, New Frontier Armory. Those are companies that provide a quality AR-15. And, and I can assure you that they're American-made because we're putting their parts in them. Nice. So when you um, were talking about that obstacle of the funding and yeah. trying to find that for launching your business, um, and I mean the sacrifices that you made, some of the people that are listening to this episode – they might be in the position where they're entertaining the idea of becoming an entrepreneur. So those that are listening, you know, definitely um, Rocky has hit it on the, hit the nail on the head with um, bootstrapping and Rocky, what is, what does bootstrapping mean to you other than, you know, the per personal sacrifices? So for us, when we couldn't afford to buy in bulk in order to get the pricing down to where you need, we really only had a few products on our website at first. And, um, and after the first month, we decided that we actually spread ourselves too thin by buying too many products. So uh, in, in June of 2015, we actually did a complete, uh, I guess, logo remodel everything in our business. And we changed our name to Unbranded AR at that time. And we decided to sell only unbranded products. Gosh, gotcha. I was wondering where the yeah. unbranded part came in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's, be, you know, we did that for a couple of reasons. We wanted to focus on quality, but we also wanted to focus on really being able to have that purchasing power, purchasing power mm -hmm. to be able to get quality parts at a low price. And so if a company or manufacturer is going to charge, you know, $2 per part to put the, a logo on it for us, I, I don't care about the logo. I care about the part. So bootstrapping for us is small steps. We couldn't afford to do that at first. So uh, have a plan, but look every single day at those numbers and decide where do I want to spend my dollars this month? And if you can only afford one product, start with one product, start with one service, and then go from there. So I, can, I consult with a lot of businesses about where they are in their process of uh, goal setting and stuff. And one of the things that, I mean, I cringe inside when I hear it is, well, we've always done it this way. You know, this is how we've always done it. This is what we're, our mission is this. It has been since, you know, 1820. And I'm like, okay, that's great. You know, and, and that's, that's wonderful mission, but adapting to um, the flow of, of your, it sounds like, which is what you guys did. You, you had a 
a base product and then you saw a need or you saw the company shifting towards a certain direction, pulling towards your customers, and then you followed that and just kind of adapted along the way. Would you agree? Absolutely. Awesome. Every single day, it's a choice. And, and, and like I said, your personal decisions, your personal finances and what you do, you know, say you're, say you're interested in starting a business. What I would say that what's most, in, look at your own personal finances, get that in check. Right. And if you can manage that, then, then you'll be able to put yourself in a position where you're going to be able to start that business mm-hmm. and, and, and learn to make educated decisions. Um, before we, before we go, mm-hmm. I wanted to see, I wanted to ask a quick question that might turn into a not so quick question, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm interested in the retail part of it. Do you have any obstacles or challenges because you're, you have a heavy retail element, um, and you're, you're in the firearm industry. I mean, are there guidelines and stuff like that that you guys have to follow or how's that work? Absolutely. We're a federal firearms licensee. We have an FFL. Um, we're also a manufacturer, so we're licensed for that. Um, so we have laws that we have to adhere to. And uh, so when we bring on someone to help us package and shipping, for example, uh, we just don't send lowers out. Uh, and lower is the, the part of the firearm that's serialized. That's the, the rifle. Uh, we just don't send lowers out to regular retail customers. We actually have to send those through a licensed dealer so that that person can get a background check uh, from there. So, you know, it's funny that you hear politicians talk about how it's so easy to get a gun online. And I'm sitting on the other side saying, how is it easy? Gosh, I'm, I spend half my day making sure that I adhere to the policies because, you know, my license depends on it. And so if you're doing this business legally and the dealers that I work with are the 350 dealers that I deal with on a regular basis do, um, it's, it's shocking to me that there's that perception because really there are a lot of loops that we have to go through as dealers to maintain our businesses, but we're willing to do it, you know, because of the why. I suppose it's because you, you, you just said you adhere to the policies. And I think that in business, there are some really bad businesses out there that don't do that. And so that's probably where, you know, what separates you guys being legit and authentic. You're following the, you know, following the rules. You're, you're doing what it takes to make sure that you're protecting the, you know, the country, but also making sure that you're protecting your business. Um, so it's probably a, a good mixture of, you know, you guys adhere to adhering to the policies and making sure that you're doing things right. Rocky, right. I am going to tell everybody right now who is listening, do not mess with Rocky. Don't go, don't go <laughs> messing with Rocky. She's got, I mean, she is, it's an AR 15. Okay. So don't go <laughs> pulling up in her driveway at two in the morning, first of all. <laughs> and then second of all, she got a big, great Dane that, you know, I have a big school mastiff and they don't like anybody messing with their mamas. Mm-hmm. Um, Rocky, how can, how can people follow you? Um, if they want to get in contact with you or follow your business, where, what's the best way for them to do yeah. that? Absolutely. If you're interested in AR-15 parts, our website is unbrandedar.com. So visit us there if you need a part. I'm happy to help. But if you want to reach out to me specifically, I'm on Instagram and I love Instagram. Rocky's Guns, R-O-C-K-Y-S-G-U-N-S. And that actually was a personal Instagram page before it sort of exploded into my business plan. So I still use it as a personal and a business, um, platform. So if you want to reach out to me, feel free to reach out to me on there. And I actually do read those messages. So, um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions and I, I do get to them eventually. Uh, sometimes it takes a little while, you know, cause I <laughs> am pretty busy, but I do, uh, that's my guilty pleasure. So you'll find me on Instagram. Uh, and you are owning Instagram with 27 to date. It's, uh, it's June, 2016 <laughs> right now, over 27,000 followers. Mm-hmm. Please go, um, connect with, with Rocky Harrigan at unbranded AR. The website is unbrandedar.com. She is a rule follower and adheres to the policies. Don't go messing with her. And uh, in Instagram, her handle is Rocky's Guns. Uh, Rocky, thank you so much for your time today. And we are all very excited to follow you in your journey. I know you're going to have some amazing things happening along the way, uh, just like you have already. So thank you so much for your time. And uh, I hope to you know connect with you a little bit more and maybe do another follow-up on, uh, on some of the things that we touched on. Absolutely, Lindsay. Have a great one. Thank you, too. Bye. Bye. 
Thanks for listening to Drop and Give Me 20, brought to you by Dramono Advertising Company in Norfolk, Virginia. Please visit our podcast in iTunes, click on subscribe, and leave us a review. Your support goes a long way. When you subscribe and leave reviews, it helps the guests on our show as well. Jump in and let us know what you think. You can also follow all of our guests on the Drop and Give Me 20 Facebook page. We have Instagram and Twitter. Those handles are Give Me 20 Podcast. I'm your host, Lindsay Germono, and I appreciate you listening to the show.